Welcome back. In case you just tuned in, this is Plots Politics on Plots TV Africa. Uh, moving on to the second topic of the day. Some residents of Lagos State discovered and looted a warehouse where COVID-19 palliatives were stored at Mazamaza community of Lagos. The community is located in Uriade local council development area of the state. The looted items were branded as COVID-19 palliatives. In reaction to this, the Lagos state government has condemned the act, saying that the distribution was ongoing but had to be halted due to protests. And yet, another warehouse containing food items branded as COVID-19 palliatives was also discovered, but this time in Ocean State. Is there something going on that the citizens don't know? Joining me to discuss this is Busayo Morakio, a community engagement manager, Follow the Money. That's the name of the group. And uh, good evening, Busayo. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for having me once again. And we still have uh, Nelson Ekujumi with us uh, online. Okay, let me start with Busayo, since we've heard a bit of Mr. Nelson's voice. Uh, what's your immediate reaction to what happened vis-a-vis -vis the response to Lagos state government. Let's start with Lagos first. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we, we saw the footages around around the um, COVID-19 palliative um, being, being looted. Um, the word is looted, actually, because, I mean, it, so, so fundamentally, let's start. We do not support looting in any way. We do not support arson in any way. And we do not support um, um, hoodlums taking over the streets in any way. Right, but sincerely, um, one cannot just um, run away from that feeling that uh, the failures of government is evident again, and 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 it's it's so it's so real because when you look at what happened during the about almost five to six months lockdown, you know, across the country at various stages, and um, the the want people had for these so-called palliatives or relief items and it didn't come because we monitored the process of distribution around some locations in the country and we're kind of disappointed. Now, we didn't know that there was this kind of stash, you know, waiting um, in, in a warehouse somewhere, God knows where, or in, in Lagos. And, and I mean, we can see the same thing in, in, um, in Cross River State. We can see the same thing in Para State. Now, 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 how do the government want citizens to trust them when palliatives that are supposed to be for the people, you know, are just left in warehouses? Now, now it's fundamentally, this is disappointing. This shows that um, government has, has not done, or people in government has not done enough, you know, to show that we have some similar okay, Busayo. governance. Okay, Busayo, you know, I think, I think your, your opening remark is clear enough. Uh, I mean, it's a conversation, so I want to make it short, short, so that we can have uh, another person joining us in the conversation. Mr. Uh, Nelson, uh, what's your reaction to what you saw uh, when it happened? Now it's moving into different states. Yes, thank you. Uh, my, my reaction to the footages that I saw was one of shock and disbelief. And uh, I was like, was this palliative meant for the uh, Amuad of the local government or from where? But when the statement from the state government that these were palliative meant to be distributed, but that they were warehoused there, I, I must confess as a civil society uh, person, that just last week, um, Thursday or Friday, today is another Friday, Thursday or Friday, as civil society groups, we were invited to Alausa and civil society organizations, variously, women groups, uh, deserve, uh, physically challenged uh, groups, and a lot of stakeholders yes. were invited to Adeyemi Barrow Center in Alausa. And these facilities were, dis, were, you know, were disputed to each group that was, you know, on a register. So for me, I think this act of criminality is condemnable because a lot of times we condemn people in government. Meanwhile, I tell ourselves that when we do this, it is important for us to look in the mirror because you recognize that even as we speak, civil servants from level 12 and below 
have not yet resumed duty in Lagos State. Those who have on duty are persons of uh, uh, level 14 and above. Because I'm saying this with all authority, with all certainty, because I've had reasons to interact with the state government in the last one month. And when you get to the offices, they will tell you you cannot go up to the commissioner's office or to a director's office that drop it at the reception that somebody will come and take it there. That tells you clearly that the government is still trying as much as possible to comply with the COVID-19 protocol. Okay. So no, seeing these uh, footage, uh, I think it tells you a lot about no, our sir. people. Nelson, uh, look, while we come Before I go people. back to Busayo, let me quickly stay with you. I, I quickly like to get your thoughts. My worry is, I think three of us agree that the action was condemnable. But I'm looking at the, 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 the mass of people going for Indomie, going for stuff like this. Does it also give us a bigger picture of the level of poverty, the level of deprivation we have in the land? No, I think it, 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 I agree. I agree that uh, there is hunger in the land, but we must also not forget that our people are greedy. I recollect that in the heat of the COVID-19 uh, 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 pandemic, in our Papa Igomu local governments, people will come when the local government, you know, was distributing palliatives. Somebody will come with a shirt, he will get his own palliatives immediately. Within a twinkle of an eye, it will just go somewhere and change to Agbada and come back and, and collect another, another round of palliatives. That's serious. And when they are telling that, I, I've seen when the officer say, I've seen your face just now, I gave you palliatives. They will say, No, you didn't give me any palliative. So it is not about the young guy alone, it is about the Degree. lots of values. Okay, in our society. Nelson, noted, noted. I'm sorry I have to be interjecting because of time. Uh, Busayo, you are itching to say something. Please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I seriously understand where Mr. Nelson is coming from, right? But when you talk about value, you talk about leadership, you talk about leadership. Now, the people mirror what they see. Now, I, I, like I said when I started, I don't support, I don't support Asson, I don't support the hoodlums, I don't support vandalization in any way. But when you talk about leadership, you are mirroring something. The people are mirroring something. Now, we have a greed culture, and that greed culture cannot just be seen from the citizens alone, but it can be seen from the government who are supposed to be role models, quote unquote, to the people because they are leaders. They are supposed to be leading, right? Fundamentally, we also have a problem of distrust in the system, a problem where people who should naturally trust that government has their interest have lost that trust on government. So when you see people go about things like this, you, you definitely want to sit back and ask ourselves, where did we miss it? We must have missed it somewhere. And I tell you the truth, where we missed it was the leadership. Now, the, the kind of leaders we have are people who are greedy, are people who have everything, they keep everything to themselves. When the people see little, they go after it and they grab it, you know, with everything. Now, the inequality gap in this country is so broad that I tell you the truth. I mean, people like myself and Mr. Nelson will not go to a warehouse and begin to deplete the warehouse like this. Let's be factual. But when you go to the streets, when you go to the villages and see how people are marginalized and these people see an opportunity for them to grab and you expect them not to grab, then I think we're not telling ourselves the truth. So for me, personally, we have a whole lot of distrust in the system. We have the system that has not worked. We, are, we work in the development space, for God's sakes. We know how to create system, you know, that would ensure that these palliatives get to everybody. How many governments in this country created a system like that? How many governments in this country can, can give a record of how much palliatives they got and how they evenly distributed these palliatives? Now, we saw some palliatives in the house of... I mean, I saw this on the video, so I'm not quoting any... I mean, don't quote me about this. I saw this on the video that... Some palliatives were at the house of the Oba of Lagos. Now, when you begin to see things like this, it, it, it just shows that we have lost it, not just as a people, but we have lost it from a leadership perspective also. A leadership that doesn't inspire hope, that doesn't inspire values, will not get anything different from what we're seeing on the streets currently. Okay, let me quickly go back to Nelson. Nelson, can we go beyond Lagos now? We are now having this being 
replicated in Oshun. Now the latest is Cross River State. What is this just coincidental? What's the connection between the minister of, uh, you know, is it humanitarian now? That, that was the reason why it was halted. But I think that issue should have been more transparent so that we are not shocked, like many of us saw the story the first time we saw it. Nelson. No, no, I'm telling you as a live participant in the process that as a civil society person, in the last two weeks, I've received, until Monday, when the protests became violent, as at Friday, Thursday, Friday, last week, I'm aware, you can make your findings, that the Lagos State Government was distributing these palliatives to various, you know, stakeholders. So I want to believe that maybe, because I've not heard from those other states you have mentioned, maybe that was the same situation. Because mind you, in all these other states that we have mentioned, civil servants from that level, maybe 7 to 12, 13, are yet to resume. And these are the people that will be in charge of the physical distribution from the state's level. Before now, we have seen distributions at the various local government levels. And I told you of what I saw at a particular local government. Where somebody came and he was putting on a shirt, he went, he collected palliatives, he gave it to somebody, the next minute he's back in Agbada <laughs> and claiming that he has not collected. That's serious. So the, the situation could be the same, but it will not be appropriate for me to speak on behalf of this other state government. Okay. But where I was involved, don't forget, these palliatives are from the private sector uh, driven palliatives. Okay. COVID. The way people were giving Indomie, they, they were, sorry, they were giving beverages, if you permit me to use that word, you know, of, of what we saw in those videos. And groups were collecting on okay. behalf. And my brother there said it was seen, uh, they recovered some of footage show that it was in the house of the Yoruba. Don't forget, the Yoruba is the traditional institution. The Yoruba has chiefs. The Yoruba has other subjects. Who knows? Maybe the palliative you saw from the Yoruba's palace were those ones that the Yoruba had just collected in the last two weeks. I'm aware I participated actively in it. My group was okay. given. I'm now the general sir. secretary of June 12 coalition. Now My sir. group is a conglomeration of over 60 now groups. Sir. I want to say I want to say thank you so much for this insight and for this uh, information you are providing us. I'm afraid time is gone, but Busayo, this is my last take with you, and that has to do with your organization. Follow the money. For record, your group was created to follow the palliatives, the donation that are given to Nigerians, and that is what you're doing. Is this information valid for you to work with? so that you can actually give the people the accurate information about these palliatives. Now, now, so let me just quickly correct that. Follow the Money wasn't created because of COVID palliative. No. Okay. Follow the Money has been since 2012. Now, Interesting. we track funds in, you know, um, from government budget and tenders and all. Now, our interest in, in Follow COVID-19 Money, which is the hashtag we've been using to track you know, everything around COVID, is, is hinged on the fact that we believe that from time immemorial, before now, you know, all the interventions that has come into this country has not been adequately um, documented, number one. It has not been adequately accounted for, you understand? And that's why I was talking about the distrust in the system. So much so that people will just want to grab because there is a perception that whenever you see anything, you would grab. And that perception comes from a leadership problem. It's a leadership gap. Now, fixing the situation is going back to fix the trust deficit citizens have with government. Mr. Nelson is struggling to make a point. And the reason why he's struggling to make that point is because people do not trust government. And that's the truth. Now, if the government was serious, the government should have come up with open, I mean, openness. What we're talking about is open government process for people to see what is happening there, for God's sake. If you have this palliative stack somewhere, there's nothing stopping you from going to the media and say, these are the amount of okay. palliatives we've gotten, this is the way the palliatives will be Busayo. distributed. Then you watch how cities... 
I'm afraid. I'm really, really afraid. I'm always going through this temptation every day. And that's when the discussion is getting heated and getting more interesting. I'm being reminded that it's time to say bye. Thank you once again, Busaya Morakio, uh, Community Engagement Manager. Follow the money. Keep following the money and keep updating us about what your discoveries are. And Nelson Akujimi, thank you for helping us to also hear the other side. And let's hope that the people can interpret what the real issues are. I'm so sorry. Thank you two gentlemen. We have to call it a day. Thank you very much. And for our viewers, we'll take a short breather. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take, especially on the first topic. Please don't go anywhere. Here is my take. Why condemnation has continued to greet President Muhammadu Buhari's broadcast, describing it as lacking sympathy and empathy, is insistence that even international community should do their fact-checking before jumping into conclusion is a cause for concern. Yes, the Lagos State Governor has ordered for investigation into the shooting, and he has also acknowledged that two have been confirmed dead and two responding to treatment. What that suggests is that there was shooting at the protesters. Even if none died, apology and penitence are the least expected from the commander-in-chief. Why tension has doused and should further douse, justice must not be allowed to be ripped. Until this is done, justice will continue to cry from the mountain top. And this is how far we can go on today's edition of Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns on Monday with another fresh edition. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeinde, saying bye for now.